What's up, guys? Just an advisory for everyone today uh, to share to your friends or anyone that may be just getting into mining with the big mining craze. Uh, I was mining back in 2018 and I stopped because BTC dropped in value and, you know, I sold, I had mining rigs and everything. I know how to do it. I, I'd put myself in the intermediate group because I can mine uh, specific coins. Like I know how to set it all up and, and I know how to set up a mining rig. But I mainly wanted to share this for the gamers that are getting into mining, uh, jumping on board because, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to get into. Uh, it's just there are certain things you need to know to protect your hardware. So it's not as simple as just following the first guide or installing nice hash, running the benchmarks and looking at the temperature on the benchmark reading. That's that's not how to mine uh, safely. So I wanted to give this warning out there because uh, I actually I'm actually the founder of the nice hash Philippines Facebook group, uh, which has quite a few members. And I don't actively go in there too much anymore because I did quit mining because it was not profitable here in Philippines. But I still follow it. Like I know, I know what's up. Uh, and I just didn't have the money to reinvest. But basically, I wanted to warn people because I've seen this in the gaming groups, uh, not the mining groups. So in the gaming groups, I've seen beginner miners getting that, downloading NiceHash. They run the algorithm. Some aren't even aware that how it works, uh, and they're just looking at the revenue on this page, the profitability, and the temperature here. Uh, which is usually your core temp if you're running an NVIDIA card. And like and, and there are, are literally people with RTX 3080s and 3090s, very, very expensive cards, running uh, Ethereum mining, and they've posted that their temps are 65C, which it's, unless they are advanced miners that have done, uh, which it goes into the realm of overclocking because under vaulting and doing it safely and still getting a high hash rate, uh, is in the realm of overclocking and undervolting. Uh, like it's, it's something you need to tweak over days, if not weeks, uh, up and down, depending on what you're doing with the card. But basically, GDDR6X in the expensive 30 series cards runs around 105C when you're mining Ethereum. And that's what that's the primary algorithm that you're going to be mining with NiceHash. So if you're looking at this temperature here, it's not that temperature. That's your core temp. Uh, the one you need to look out for is install hardware monitor or use MSI Afterburner and look at the memory temperature, which that's your GDDR6X. That is what's getting hammered by mining Ethereum. And if it's sitting up at 110C, 105C, you might want to think about the lifespan of your card and protecting your card by either under vaulting or, uh, well, mainly by under vaulting, but as well through your fan profile because one other thing miners may not be aware of, or new beginner miners, is that when your card's running at 65C on the core, your fan follows your core temp. It doesn't follow your memory temp. So when you're mining Ethereum, there's very little core load. Your your core could even be sitting at 50C, uh, and that is going to keep your fan speed down, and part of the reason why your memory is getting really, really hot. Uh, and it'll probably still run hot, even when you put a manual fan curve, but every little bit helps. So you want to have something like MSI Afterburner, turn off auto and set it all the way up to 80 or 70% minimum. Uh, if you can tolerate the noise, go higher. Usually around 70% is where fans start to get really audible. So about 70%. And yeah, if you can go higher, go higher. Because when you factor in the price of replacing a fan or even replacing the entire cooler, like you could put on a aftermarket cooler later, there, there are different types of aftermarket coolers you can put on. When you compare that price to the cost of the GPU itself, uh, it's just like a no-brainer. I'd rather have a fan fail and replace it for 20 bucks, or I'd rather have all the fans fail if it's a three-fan card. Even if they all fail and you buy a whole new cooler for 70 bucks, uh, that's not really much compared to a $1,000 GPU with the current uh, price inflation. So just keep that in mind. Set a custom fan speed on manual to 70% because your core temp is not going to help your memory when your memory is getting too hot. So... That's the main purpose of this video. I just want to warn people because uh, right now there is not a, any solid factual information about how well GDDR6X will tolerate running at a high temperature in the long term. Uh, 105 to 110 is basically within spec, but it's also towards the throttle limit. So that's when the memory starts throttling. And if you have like a, if, if you're really like in a bad situation where you, I, I, I like, I'm not trying to put anyone down. 
But if you're just unlucky and you happen to be running in a tiny case with poor airflow and you've tried mining out and you didn't know it was the memory temp that heats up, your memory could be running at 120 C, which will damage the memory uh, at that point. Uh, even if it's throttling, it could still get damaged. Um, hopefully the card would do something to mitigate that. But as far as I'm aware, it, it, I think it is possible to cook your memory uh, if you were running in, the, in, in a really bad airflow environment with high ambient temps, for example. And even having, and especially if your fan wasn't set up because you've been looking at the core temp. So yeah, morning you guys, and otherwise happy mining. I mean, I've got nothing against people mining. I have what I have something against is when people hoard GPUs when a new release, you know, and there's you live in a, for example, in a town with other people, and a lot of the people that want to buy a new GPU are gamers that want to have do it for enjoyment, not for making money. And you know, it's okay to buy GPUs to make money, but if you're doing it at the expense of the enjoyment of others, I think that's a bit of a, a dull move. Like, even me, if I had like $10,000 and I went to a store on a new release of a GPU and I saw people in line, even if I was a miner and my intention was to mine, I wouldn't, morally, I wouldn't be able to just buy 10 GPUs and walk out of, the, out of there with a straight face. Uh, I would actually feel bad doing that. And I know that there's miners that wouldn't bat an eye at doing that kind of thing um hopefully they're just ordering direct from supplier and then that's the supplier thing they should be putting a limit on how many gpus especially if it's known to be for mining uh they should be limiting that given the shortages around the world but enough on that like, i don't want to get too into that i just wanted this advisory to to help people out and if you want some tips uh look up your specific model card look up ethereum temps because that's what you're likely you're likely going to be running this algorithm here um, NB Miner or Phoenix uh, Dagger Hashimoto, that's Ethereum. So that's more than likely one of those you're going to be mining. And you get paid in BTC, like uh, NYSASH automatically convert it for you. But you just need to be aware that mining Ethereum is going to heat up your memory and you may not even have a memory sensor, in which case I still recommend just set at least 70% fan curve. If you're running on a lower model NVIDIA GPU, I think some of them don't have memory sensors. And it could be running fairly hot, and you're just looking at the core temp. So set your manual fan speeds, and then maybe look into buying an IR gun, or just make sure you have good airflow. You should be fine, okay? Uh, it's more when you're not running any fan curve at all. You're, you're just running it on auto, and that'll that'll be sitting. Like, as you can see, my GPU at the moment, it's at 38%. Uh, I don't use MSI Afterburner because I'm on an AMD card. But it's sitting at... 1200 rpm the gpu can do 3200 and if i start mining right now on this fan curve uh it'll sit it'll it won't even break 2000 rpm and my memory will heat up uh, a ton so if i switch to my for example my mining profile it looks completely different i've actually set the minimum to as you can see here the minimum is 60 percent and as soon as the core gets a little bit hot, which the core runs on a different curve. Like when you're mining at, the core might only get to 55C. And at 55C, I'm already going to hit 70% fan speed. And that's basically taking into account the lower core temps when mining at. Uh, and I just want that slight increase in core temperature to help my memory out. So, you know, worst case scenario, I'm going to be running 60% at the minimum. But if I left that stock, it'll sit at 1200 RPM or 1500 RPM. And the cooler can go up to 3,000. So, you know, just just making that aware, you can set power limits, you can reduce it. Like this card can do 55 mH if I overclock the memory, but then it's at the cost of 10 degrees on temps. And even GDDR6 non-X uh, gets up to 100 C with some slight overclocking. And at stock, it runs 95 to 100. Uh, even with an undervolt, it'll still hit 95 C, uh, unless you mod it, uh, change the thermal pads out undervolt some more and there's only so far you can undervolt to get gains like um i still hit 49 mh going all the way down to 1200 megahertz on core at 830 mv and that does help temps a little bit and then there's 30 percent minus 30 on power limit and i still get decent hash rates if i go under this if i go to like 800 mv the hash rate starts dropping by like 5 mh per per 10 mv like that's where the drop off is so i can't go lower than that without taking too much of a hash rate hit but you can find like the sweet spot where you're getting good efficiency good temperatures and you're you're basically not taking a high risk by running max um by running max memory temps and throttling your memory 
So thanks for watching, guys, and I hope this helps you out. Please warn your friends, especially if you know they're getting into mining and they're telling you their temps are great. Uh, they might even be posting it. Uh, I've actually got friends that have done the same thing, and I've warned them. Uh, they've got, like, RTX 3080s, and they were running it at, suppose, around 70 degrees, which sounds really good. Uh, that's a decent temp. And it wasn't, they were looking at the wrong temperature. And, and this is widespread. So I'm just getting this information out there, even if it's just one video. Maybe a, a few of the big, uh, the big tech sites might pick up on it, and that would be good too. Like it'd be really good if some of the, you know, Gamers Nexus, TechSpot, and all that warn people, because it is really easy to get misled if you don't know what you're doing. Like if I was running an NVIDIA GPU, uh, like because I'm on AMD, I specifically know I have to monitor my temps separately. If I was on NVIDIA and I had this reading working, I could, and I was a beginner, it would be really easy to get misled into thinking, okay, my GPU is running really cool. I've got no, nothing to worry about. I can just mine away and earn some free money. So yeah, it's not that simple. Uh, you want to know what you're doing. You preferably want to learn how to undervault to protect your cards. And that's what advanced miners know. So for as well, this is uh, one more thing I'll add on the end. For all the people that think mining ruins cards, it's not. Uh, mining, when you don't know what you're doing, ruins cards and can cause premature failures and you know things like that. Uh, or mining in poor conditions where you don't take care of your hardware. But most uh, hobby miners, as uh, as I would call them, like like myself before I quit, but back when I was mining, I undervolted. I made sure temps were well within spec. Nothing was like being hammered. Nothing was throttling. Everything was basically under 70 degrees with my 1050 Ti's. I had like eight 1050 Ti's, a 1070 Ti, a 1060. And this was a few years back, but all the temps were way lower than your average gamer would run them. And the, the biggest risk of failure were the fans. That's all. And I had fans set up for more, more airflow than a standard gaming case would have. I had like every GPU had fans pushing and pulling over the back of the PCB and through the graphics card in open air. So a bit of dust and fan failures would be the biggest risk. But otherwise, the actual loads on the cards were consistent and very good in terms of temperatures. I even had an IR gun that I used to check the VRMs and things like that. And a lot of miners, uh, hobbyist miners, will will go through that kind of effort to protect their components because they don't want their cards to fail so that they can't resell them and upgrade later. So when you see a miner selling a card, it's because it survived and they've usually done gone through, through the effort to undervolt them and get them running better than a gaming uh, card would. So at lower temps than average gaming cards, because average gaming cards, the fan curves are designed for lower noise, and they'll still allow the cards to heat up a fair bit. Like they'll let the card, they'll let the GPU get up to 80C before the fan really kicks in, uh, while a miner will be running their GPU core much lower, uh, usually around 65C, and they also try to keep the VRM and the memory cool and the back of the PCB cool. So you can look up mining rigs, you can look up how they're built, you can look up how the fans are set up, you can look how they have fans like really close to the cards pushing over the back of the pcb and you might actually get an idea of how well some of these mining rigs take care of miners take care of their cards uh they don't just like set them in a box with no fans and and run them at 100 percent. it's it's not like that uh the core is usually never even near 100 percent for mining ethereum which is the main algorithm uh the core is usually like maybe 50 percent, and it's just a memory that is highly loaded and as long as you keep the memory cool, uh, memory is memory can go up to like 95, 100, and it's still well within spec. It's just lower is always better, and that's the same thing. Miners will keep try to keep their cards cool. So that's why they do a lot of the mining in overseas countries with lower uh, ambient temperatures. So, yeah, just a bit of that info there, because I do see it thrown around a lot. Uh, I would actually be more inclined to buy a miner card and... and at worst, worry about fan failure than to buy a heavily used gaming card that's been used in an internet cafe, for example, because usually they're not tuned at all. They're not undervolted, uh, and the temps aren't really taken into consideration. They're just allowed to throttle, and the fan has to just work on its on its really low stock settings. So usually, yeah, that that's hotter than a than a miner would run. So anyway. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in another video. I have a thermal pad video that I'll be putting up. Uh, to show the benefits of swapping thermal pads on my Sapphire Pulse and basically a comparison to what most uh, RX 5700 owners would be getting while mining, I'll have a comparison temperature to what changing the pads can do. So I won't fit that into this video because that'll turn this into a 30-minute video, but 
Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe if this information helped you. Bye bye.